I know what you're thinking. How can this guy be wearing a Falcons hat after what happened on Sunday? It's because I'm a true fan <laughs> or a stupid fan. The sixth installment of the annual limited release series named Little Book is here, overseen and blended by Freddie No, eighth generation master distiller of the Fred B. No Distillery and great great grandson of Jim Beam. This blend is inspired by No's interest in smoking and grilling meats, particularly how smoking different woods can create unique flavors and aromas in food. On top of that, it also features some very young whiskey, utilizing unique wood staves and barrel techniques, including the use of cherry wood staves, applewood smoke barrels, hickory smoke barrels, and maple wood staves. So is the book getting better, or is the book getting less interesting? Let's find out. It's the Mash and Drum. What's up folks, I'm Jason C from The Mash and Drum and welcome back to the show. Uh, Little Book Chapter 6 is named To The Finish and according to the website, offers a chance for any curious whiskey drinker to expand their palate, both seasoned connoisseurs and newcomers alike. The name of this year's chapter offers fans of American whiskey an opportunity to experience liquid that Freddie No personally had a hand in creating and showcases the innovation of Little Book Chapters over the last six years. But before we dive in, let's hear from our sponsor for today's video, a new cocktail just in time for the fall season, it's Shaker and Spoon. All right, you guys have heard me talk about Shaker and Spoon before, and for good reason. I love their subscription so much, and I've gotten a ton of feedback on how much folks love it as well, that I decided to make some more cocktails and show you just how great these boxes are and how much I appreciate them being a sponsor. Now, Shaker and Spoon is a subscription service that teaches you to make bar quality cocktails from recipes designed by award-winning mixologists. Shaker and Spoon builds these boxes around one singular spirit and tries to give you different styles of cocktail making. Included in the box, you get all these different recipe cards that guide you through mixing and garnishing each cocktail. They also have videos you can look up to help you along the way. Each box includes all the ingredients other than the alcohol for about 12 cocktails, four from each recipe. Everything you need, syrups, bitters, garnishes, infusions, they give you specialty syrups that are all house made, all created in small batches in Red Hook, Brooklyn. So this box happens to be centered around using bottled and bond apple brandy, which is a pretty popular spirit nowadays. Cocktail is called Pear Necessities. For this one, I already have my bottled and bond brandy in the shaker. I just need my supplied ingredients of vanilla pear shrub, ginger beer, and candy ginger. All right, let's make it. So I need three quarters of an ounce of the vanilla pear shrub, which sounds delicious. Here we go. Ice, ice baby. Now it says to add a splash of the supplied ginger beer and then strain it into my glass. Then it says to top some more ginger beer on top and add some candy ginger for garnish. They actually give you these little, uh, these little toothpicks and candy ginger. Absolutely love it. All right, let's try it. I definitely get the vanilla, I get the pear, the ginger, obviously you're gonna taste. And I can taste that apple brandy. Absolutely delicious cocktail. So let's recap quickly. Shaker and Spoon is a monthly cocktail subscription box that will deliver these craft cocktails to your door. So if you're interested, click that link below in the description or use code Mash and Drum at checkout for $20 off your first box. Again, click the link below in the description or use code Mash and Drum for $20 off your first box. Now go get some fun cocktails with Shaker and Spoon and enjoy. Cheers, guys. Little Book Chapter 6 is a blend of five different whiskeys using different wood staves and barrel techniques that impart a unique liquid profile to each of those whiskeys due to the secondary aging process. The challenge was to use lower age whiskeys and get them to complement each other and still be an approachable whiskey. Now the base of this whiskey, or most of the blend, is actually malt. Pour a little bit there. As I mentioned, the inspiration for chapter six came from combining two of Freddie No's passions, cooking and whiskey. So using five different whiskeys and using the smoke and flavor of different woods. So Little Book to the Finish is made up of a four year straight malt whiskey finished with cherry wood staves, a four year straight malt whiskey in applewood smoke barrels, a four year straight malt whiskey finished in hickory smoke barrels, a four year straight malt whiskey finished with maple wood staves, and to top it all off, a five year old Kentucky straight bourbon. 
117.4 proof and like all the little book releases it's uncut unfiltered available nationwide in limited quantities with suggested retail price of 124.99 oh i have opinions on the price but let's try it first all right here we go the first thing you pick up in this is apple you definitely get apples i don't know if it's the apple wood uh the apple wood smoke that was you know imparted into this whiskey but i get apple I definitely get some smoke. There's definitely some smoke influence here. And you get that maltiness. You get like a cereal, like malty quality to it. Not really getting like a big hint of like that typical Jim Beam nuttiness, that, that nutty profile you usually get, like that peanut flavor. Maybe a little bit is there, but not much. Yeah, the barrel char, the oak, the smoke, all there on the nose. I mean, it's weird. It's got like this mix of like fresh cut wood, but also like, you know, burning wood chips or something like that. So, all right, let's try it. Here we go. Yeah, you know what? The smoke is there. Apple toffee, a little bit of spice, the wood smoke. The maltiness is there too. You know, if you just gave this to me blind, I would probably never think that it's a bean product, but it really comes off like nice and smoky. Yeah, second sip is a little bit more of the maltiness comes through. It's a little bit sweeter than I thought it was gonna be. When I heard about all those different smoke profiles going into it, you know, I thought, man, the smoke is gonna overpower this. It's really not, it's, it's I mean, the smoke is there, you can definitely taste it. And if you're not used to smoky whiskeys, like I like to drink peated scotch, especially when it gets a little bit cooler out. So if you're not used to that, this could come off really smoky if you're not ready for it. And honestly, even at 117.4 proof, it's actually drinking a little bit lighter than that. There's a good spice initially when you first try it, but it doesn't drink nearly as like hot or potent as like a Booker's or something like that. It's definitely a little bit softer. And I just like the malt kind of mixed with the smoke flavor. Yeah, you know what? The more you sip it, the softer on the palate it gets. So it is very approachable. But on the finish, for me, there's a little bit of a bitter smoke thing going on. I'm just... You know, when I read the profile, I, I really wanted to like this whiskey, but it's just it's just not working for me. In the beginning, I think I was a little bit more like, oh, okay, maybe we're onto something here, but yeah, I this is not really my favorite. Maybe like a slight hint of chocolate from the malt coming through, a little like a malty chocolatey note coming through a little bit. But I don't know, I think this is gonna really depend on your palate and how much it, it, how much your palate is used to some of that smokiness and how it can adjust to some of that smokiness as well. It's a decent little book, but 125 bucks. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's fine, it's okay. I, I don't think people that are sensitive to a, a smoky type of whiskey are, is gonna really dig this one. And I think the age on top of it is also what makes this a hard sell, I think, because there's some contradicting theories here. So um, let's go to the final breakdown on this one and talk about Little Book Chapter 6. All right, final breakdown on this one, Little Book Chapter 6. Price, 125 bucks, 124.99 to be exact. Uh, secondary market value, don't really see these too much on secondary at all, so I'll just leave that one blank for now. Availability. It is limited, but you do see a lot of these if you get Jim Beam in your area, if, if you get Booker's where you are, generally you tend to see Little Book. Usually does sell fast, but sometimes they do stick around. Value for this one. All right, this is the biggie. Value for this bottle, I'm gonna say is poor. Poor, very, very poor value on this. And, I'll, and let me explain why, because it, it, it kind of coincides with what they mentioned in the, in the press release. So what they say in the press release is that, you know, Freddie wanted this to be an approachable whiskey. Um, something that, that folks that aren't even used to drinking barrel proof whiskeys could, 
could appreciate. But he also said it's something that connoisseurs would also enjoy as well. So if you're trying to get newcomers and connoisseurs alike to buy this bottle, putting it at $125 to me doesn't make sense. Now, you kind of factor all that in, and then the oldest whiskey in this blend is a five-year-old straight bourbon. But it's just hard for me to wrap my head around what Beam is doing. If you look at the Hardin's Creek releases, you had a 15-year-old release. Well, it was actually, technically, it was a 16 and a 15-year-old blend um, that was, what, about 200, 250 bucks for that one. Then you had a two-year-old that was 80 bucks. I think it's I think it's very interesting that Beam is charging a premium amount of money or putting a limited release tag on a bottle with only, you know, four-year-old and five-year-old whiskey in it. For me, I like to follow the model that you pay 10 bucks for every year that the whiskey is aged. Now that doesn't always, you know, translate, but you know, if you're going by the model that, you know, a five-year-old whiskey should be 50 bucks or a six-year-old whiskey, 60 bucks, a 12-year-old whiskey, 120 bucks, you know, those are prices I could probably deal with, especially in today's whiskey market. But you're asking folks to pay 125 bucks. That's retail. That's if you find it at retail for four and five-year-old whiskey in this bottle that you, that's kind of an experiment with different smokes and different woods and whatever, you know, whatever was used in this. I just don't see the great value proposition in buying that bottle at that price. So what's the most I would pay? If it were up to me, I'd pay 50 bucks for this because it's young whiskey, it's experimental to a point. And you know, while I could appreciate what Freddie is doing with this bottle and using the different finishes and the smoky, you know, aspects to it, um, I just feel like they shouldn't, you know, for something like this, they shouldn't be asking consumers to pay a premium amount for that bottle. So is this a recommend? I'm gonna say no. I just, I don't think, I mean, you you put aside what it tastes like, just the pricing model for this just doesn't add up to me. I just don't like the fact that you're asking folks to pay $125 for something that seems to be a little bit more experimental also using four-year-old and five-year-old whiskey. When it comes to the flavor profile, this is a definitely a try before you buy. I would definitely try this. Like I said, if you're sensitive to smoke, this might be one you wanna skip or might be something you definitely wanna try before you buy it. But as far as like a lockdown, buy this immediately, no. I don't think I've had a little book that's a lockdown buy immediately since chapter three, which was all the cash strength, small batch, uh, Offerings all blended together. That was probably the best little book that they came out with uh, high age You know cast strength variants of the small batch offerings from uh, from Jim Beam all blended together. That was brilliant That's what little book needs to get back to I, I like I said I love the the experimental part of this but if you're gonna experiment and you're gonna ask people to pay a premium You have to put some older whiskey in it. I don't care what anybody says all right, guys, well, thanks for watching this latest review on the new Little Book Chapter 6. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this yet, what you think of it. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers. And what can I say? I'm hoping there's one more chapter that saves the book. Because right now, Little Book for me, I might be ready to close it. Cheers, guys.